Hello, Russian learners! I'm Anastasia, and our first Love Grammatory video will be devoted to plural of nouns. So what are you going to learn from this video? You are going to learn how to make plural dictionary form of Russian nouns, you will learn the difference between hard and soft plural endings, learn about some exceptions, and the seven-letter spelling rule. In terms of phrases, you will learn 12 ways to make her feel special, 6 ways to let her know you know something about the Russian culture, 6 travel-related phrases, 2 phrases to let her know you care about her children, a phrase to compliment her parents, and a few more. Are you excited? Let's achieve it! We will first go over the regular endings. So what does this mean, regular? It means that for these nouns there are certain rules, and they do work for them. The word irregular endings means that rules work for them as well, but with some restrictions. And if you hear the word exceptions, that means these nouns do not obey the rules. So let's go to our classroom now and look at the regular endings first. Let me first tell you about masculine nouns. And here we have two variants, soft and hard. Masculine nouns that end in a soft sign or y take the vowel e as their plural ending. Let me first show you separate words as examples, and then we'll move to phrases. So, medvedj, medvedi. As you can see, the soft sign changed to e. Raditel, raditeli. Once again, raditel, raditeli. Here you can see the vowel o, and probably you have been wondering why uh, do I not say it like roditel. So here we have a rule, a Russian pronunciation rule, which is called the unstressed o rule. So in this word, the vowel o is unstressed because the stress falls on e, raditel. So, when the vowel O is unstressed, we reduce it to the sound that you may find in the English word sofa. Ah, sofa. So, it's like a weak A. Ah. Let's try to say it with the weak A ah sound. Raditel. Okay? Raditeli. Plural. So, remember, unstressed O sounds like a weak A. Next example, дожд, plural, дожди. Again, the soft sign changed to e. Here, again, you can see the unstressed o. So we pronounce this word as дожди. It may sound weird when you translate it into English. Rains, because in English you don't use the word rain in the plural form. However, in Russian it means rainy weather. So if you have rain repeatedly every day, we say дожди. Great! These were examples of masculine nouns ending in a soft sign. Now let's look at some words that end in Y. So nouns ending in Y. Музей. Музеи. As you can see, y, the short sound, turned into the vowel e. So this was a consonant. Y. This is a vowel e. Музеи. Музеи. Гений. Гений. Герои. Герои. A few words about this sound. This sound, y, is the same sound as you have in English in the words toy or boy, y. And it's a consonant. So, masculine nouns ending in a consonant 
in the consonant y. In the plural form, take the e at the end. So this was the soft variant. Now to the hard variant. Ah, if you don't know the difference between hard and soft variant of pronunciation, watch my ultimate guide on the Russian alphabet, if it's already there by the time you're watching this video. Or simply book a lesson with one of our tutors at aruspro.com. Все иди. Иди. Masculine nouns that end in a hard consonant so, in one of these 13 letters, not followed by the soft sign, will attach U as their plural ending. So, if you see a noun ending in one of these letters, attach U to make the plural form. For example, surprise, surprise. You see, the noun ends in Z. And we attached U. Месяц. Месяцы. Again, attached U to the C. Вопрос. Вопросы. U is following C, the hard consonant C. Again, in this noun, вопрос, you noticed the unstressed O. So we say вопрос and вопросы. Комплимент, комплименты. Результат, результаты. Разговор, разговоры. Here again the unstressed O. And now let's learn a few love phrases with the words you've just seen. And the first phrase suggests you really mean everything you say to your wife or girlfriend. Все эти слова это не комплименты, это чистая правда. So here we have the word комплименты in the plural form, the ending U. If you really want to surprise your lady, say this phrase. Любимая, собирайся. Мы едем в путешествие. Все вопросы потом. А то опоздаем на самолет. Of course, you need to have real plane tickets and the real trip planned to make this surprise pleasant for her. If you want to compliment her parents, you can use this phrase. Дорогая, твои родители просто гении. Я сам лучше не придумал бы. So here we have two nouns in plural. Can you see them? Родители, parents, soft masculine ending, и, and гении. Again, soft masculine plural ending, и. And the last is a line from a great, lovely old song, which is very popular, which was very popular in the Soviet Union and now it's still uh, loved by many people. This song was written by an extraordinary woman composer, Alexandra Pahmutova, who is now 90 years old and is still writing music. Can you imagine? So this song is called Nadezhda, which means hope. And the line we are interested in goes like this. Здесь у нас туманы и дожди. 
Здесь у нас холодные рассветы. So which nouns are in the plural form in this sentence? Let's find them and then we'll listen to this part of the song. So, can you see them? Туманы, fogs. Is it hard or soft plural ending? It's hard. Дожди, rains or rainy weather. И, soft masculine plural ending. And what else? Рассветы, sunrises. Again, hard masculine plural ending. And now, let's listen to the song. Now, moving on to feminine nouns. And here we also have two variants, soft and hard. And again, we will start with the soft variant. So, feminine nouns in their singular form in the soft variant have the endings ya or the soft sign. And just like masculine nouns, in the plural form, they will change to и. Let's look at some examples. История, истории. Я change to и. Деревня, деревни. Ситуация, ситуации. So, in all these examples, я change to и. Now let's look at feminine nouns that end in a soft sign. Ночь, ночи. Вещь, вещи. Мысль, мысли. So in all these examples, the soft sign changed to и. Pay attention that all these words are feminine. So in Russian, we may have feminine and masculine nouns ending in a soft sign. Please watch a separate video on this on my channel. So this was the soft variant. And now to the hard variant. The hard singular ending for feminine nouns is a. So in plural, it will change to u. Some examples. Женщина, женщины. А change to и. Проблема, проблемы. Unstressed о. Проблема, проблемы. Квартира, квартиры. Основа. Основы. Again, our friend unstressed о. Причина. Причины. Комната. Комнаты. Please notice that with feminine hard endings, we replace the vowel. So if we have a here in the singular form, we replace it with ы. Unlike in masculine nouns. As you remember, in masculine nouns, we just attach u to the stem. Uh, if you remember the word вопрос, right? вопрос, the masculine noun, we just add u here at the end. With feminine, we replace the last letter in the hard variant, as well as in the soft variant. Let's learn a few more smash hit compliments for your girlfriend. Мне не нужны все женщины мира. Мне нужна только ты. So, what is the plural noun here? Женщины. Women. 
and as you can see it corresponds to нужны so this phrase мне не нужны which is translated into English as I don't need literally means to me мне to me are not needed so here we kind of have this passive construction women are not needed to me мне не нужны все женщины and since женщины is in the plural form нужны also has the plural ending whereas here нужна мне нужна только ты only you are needed to me I need only you since you are talking to only one woman here you will just have the singular form нужна and you can see the feminine ending а that you have already seen in our hard variant feminine nouns the second phrase if you want to surprise your girlfriend or wife мне не нужны причины чтобы подарить цветы любимой девушке so once again we have seen a few unstressed o's here oops that's not the one this is the one только подарить любимой here again we have the plural noun the feminine plural noun причина in the plural form причины reasons and it agrees again with this phrase мне не нужны reasons are not needed to me next phrases if your beloved is a dark-eyed girl you can say this phrase to her and surprise her by knowing the quote that every Russian knows. So, в городе Сочи. Do you know the city? Сочи. Темные ночи. Такие же темные, как твои прекрасные глаза. So, here we have the noun ночи, nights, which is plural of ночь, the feminine noun ночь. Actually, in this sentence we have another noun in the plural form, it's eyes, глаза, but here you have the unusual ending. I will tell you more about these endings, these exceptions later in this video. And now, moving on to phrase number two. And you can use this phrase to let her know you always think about her. С тех пор, как мы познакомились, a long word, got acquainted, познакомились, все мои мысли только о тебе. So here, pay attention about you. The preposition O is not stressed and it obeys the rule of the unstressed O. Why is that? Because in Russian the prepositions usually are not stressed. So this phrase will read as one word. So you kind of blend in the preposition and the pronoun. А тебе, а тебе, about you. And the final phrase for feminine noun. Милая, я купил видео камеру. So let's look at this word here. It's an interesting word because here you might think this is an unstressed O, but actually it's a foreign word. And we will pronounce it uh, as two words actually because it was imported from um, English uh, video kameru so two words that is why o is pronounced as it is it's not reduced 
And of course, the dictionary form of this word will be video camera, like in English, video camera, video camera. Milaya, ya kupil video kameru. Теперь мы сможем сохранить для детей все истории нашей жизни. A nice long sentence. So, here we have this word in plural form. Истории. The singular form will be ISTORIA, a feminine word with a soft ending. STORY, STORIES. So, if you say this phrase to your wife, she will be happy to know you want to record every joyful moment of your life. But, let's be honest, usually men buy such things as video cameras for themselves. But you still need to explain your purchase to your wife, right? So this phrase will be useful in this case. Now let's review what we learned about masculine and feminine nouns in plural. So in both genders we have the difference between soft and hard endings. With masculine nouns, in the soft variant, the soft sign and y turn into e in plural. And in the hard variant, a consonant attaches u. In the feminine nouns, in the soft variant, again we have the soft sign and ya, which turn into e again. So e and e for soft in both genders. And for hard ending, the feminine ending a goes to u. So again, u and u for hard variant of both genders, masculine and feminine. Great. And now we are moving to neutral nouns, which are different when it comes to plural endings. So let's have a look at them. As you have already guessed, we will be dealing again with two variants of plural neutral endings, soft and hard. So, with neutral nouns with the soft ending, in singular it's ye in most cases, sometimes yo, but the nouns ending in yo are quite rare. So, in most cases, with neutral gender, in the singular soft variant, we have the ending ye. So, Ye will change to ya in plural. Let's look at some examples again and then we will move to hard variant. Свидание. Свидание. Ye change to ya. Ружье. Ружья. One of the few words that end in yo. Ружье. Ружья. Море, моря. So probably you noticed that in these two nouns, when we change them to plural, their emphasis changed as well. So ружье became ружья. Emphasis went from the end of the word to the beginning. Море, моря. Uh, the opposite situation. The emphasis was at the beginning. Море, it moved to the end, Maria, and here we see again the unstressed O, since the emphasis moved, the O became unstressed, so we pronounce it as Maria. So this emphasis change always happens, well not always, but in 99% of cases it happens in short nouns, usually two syllable long. We will talk more about it when we come to the hard variant. And now let's look at the last example here. Желание, желание. So again, ye goes to ya. Now let's look at the hard variant that have the hard ending o 
In the singular dictionary form, the plural ending will be a. And, as I said before, in short words consisting of two syllables, the emphasis normally will shift. So, if the emphasis was on the beginning, it will shift to the end. Let me read these examples to you and then we'll talk more about them. Slova, slava, prava, prava, dela, dela, mesta, mesta. So, have you noticed something? In all these words, in their singular form, the ending O is unstressed. It's unstressed. So, we will pronounce it as a weak A. Remember, as in the word sofa. A. Sofa. Slova. Prava. Dela. Mesta. But when we change them into the plural form, the ending becomes stressed and it becomes a. Now it's a strong a. So it's the real sound a. So we pronounce it strongly. Slava, prava, dela, mesta. Okay, I hope you got it. And let's look at some of these words. Do you recognize this word? Dela. I'm sure you know the phrase. Как дела? How are you? How have you been doing? So, literally in Russian, we are saying, how are your things that you are doing? How are your deeds or to-dos? Right? It's related to the verb to do, делать. So, как дела? How are things that you've been doing during the day? What else? Here we have another interesting word, prava. Prava. In the singular form, it only has one meaning as a noun. As a noun, it means right, like your right to do something, your right for education, your right for life. I don't know. Prava can mean rights, as in plural, as in human rights in general. And it has an additional meaning of driver's license. This meaning appears only in the plural form. So the singular form doesn't have this meaning. So a driver's license, this document, in Russian, it's your prava. Prava. Great. Now let's look at four more words. Again, with emphasis change, but now the emphasis will shift from the ending to the beginning. Akno, okna. One more time. Akno, okna. So in the singular form, the first o was unstressed. That is why we pronounce it as a akno, akno. Now, in the plural form, it becomes stressed. Okna, okna, and the uh, the ending changes to a, uh, the hard variant. Pismo, pisma, chislo, chisla, and yaitso, yaitsa. So here we have the emphasis shift from the end to the beginning of the word. Uh, one interesting noun here is chislo. It has two meanings. Number, as in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12. And date. Uh, it's not a date like a meeting, like a romantic date, but uh, it's just a date. For example, today is the 1st of January, for example. Right? It's a date. And pismo can be a paper letter or an email. It can be the same word. It can be the same word. Pismo. So, these were short, neutral nouns with the hard ending O and 
we have just seen how the emphasis shifts in short nouns. Now let's look at longer nouns. Nouns that longer uh, that are longer than three, two syllables. Sorry. So we will look at nouns that are three or more syllables long, and we'll see what happens with the emphasis there. So some longer neutral nouns ending in o. Well, some of them are very long, but let's start with this word. Pravila. Pravila. So again, in the singular form, since the ending is not stressed, we pronounce it as a weak a. Pravila. What do we do here? The emphasis stays where it was. It's not a short word, it's a longer word. Three syllables. Pravilo. Pravila. So the emphasis stays here and we pronounce it as pravila. So it sounds almost the same. Pravila, pravila. What can you do about it? How could you recognize which is which? Which is singular, which is plural? When you hear it or when you see it in a context, the surrounding words such as adjectives, verbs, possessives like my, your, his, her. So these surround surrounding words will help you identify the number of the word, right? The, identify whether it's singular or whether it's plural. For example, if you want to say my rule, for example, my rule. Моё правило. So, моё, this possessive word for my ends in yo, and we know that yo is one of the neutral endings. And it's singular, right? Not plural, singular. So, you know it's singular, my rule. But if you see, for example, this, мои правила, мои правила, you see e, and you remember that e is one of the plural endings. We have seen it in masculine and feminine nouns, so it's also a plural ending for the possessive pronoun here. My rules, my правила. Okay, so it takes a little bit of practice, but as you progress in your studies, you will uh, you will get used to it, and you will be able to identify whether it's singular or plural by looking or by hearing to surrounding words. Okay, now let's turn to this long word here. Let me pronounce it slowly, syllable by syllable. Abstayatelstva. One more time. Abstayatelstva. So here we have emphasis on ya. That is why all the three O's are unstressed. So we will say it like this. Обстоятельства. Okay? And uh, in the plural form, circumstances. Обстоятельства. Again, almost the same. But you already know how to identify which is which. And the last word. Одеяло. Same thing. Unstressed O. And one more unstressed O. And одеяло. Plural. Uh, if you are a beginner and you want to uh, set your articulation, especially um, when you want native speakers to understand you, when you pronounce these long words, for example, this word. So if you want uh, everyone to understand you really well, I recommend you to do this. I recommend you to over articulate the word. Uh, what does it mean? It means that you pronounce 
every single syllable as it is written. So if you see an O, you will say O, right? So to uh, train your articulation. Obstoyatelstvo. Okay, but uh, this is only if you, uh, if you are a beginner and if you want to really practice pronunciation. But, of course, you know now that native speakers will reduce these O's. And, again, as you progress in your studies, it will be easier, um, it will be easier and easier for you to say it like native speakers do. So, обстоятельства. Great, we are done with single, single words. Uh, now we are moving to phrases that you can use with your wife or girlfriend. When you are very much in love, at some point you might even want to say this. Я буду исполнять все твои желания. Моя дорогая. So, here we have a noun, a neutral noun in the plural form. What is that? Желания. Желания. Wishes. And it has a soft plural ending, я, because in the singular form it's желание. It ends in е. Желание. Wish. Please notice that here твои is also plural. Remember, мои, right? My in plural. Мои, твои, yo. Right? And, well, моя is different from мои since it's feminine. My darling, you are addressing your girlfriend or wife. Моя дорогая. My darling, feminine form. Uh, if after you said the previous phrase you don't want to stop and you want to turn your promise into an oath and you really want to show that you are committed to her, you can say this phrase. И только обстоятельства непреодолимой силы могут Помешать мне выполнить мое обещание. So if you learn these two phrases, I'm sure she will be yours forever. Okay? So now let's find uh, the plural noun in the second phrase. Remember this word? Обстоятельства. Right? Circumstances, neutral noun in the plural form, hard ending a. Uh, anything else here in the plural form? No. But we have another neutral noun, this time in the singular form. Обещание. Unstressed o. Обещание. Promise. Soft, singular, neutral ending е. And it agrees with the word my. Mayo. Mayo is also neutral. Very good. And the last two phrases for the neutral nouns. The next phrase is just asking her how she's been doing. Привет, солнышко. Как у тебя дела сегодня? You remember the word дела? Right? It's plural, the plural form of the noun делo, the neutral noun делo, right? Делo, which means a thing that you do, anything that you do. So, literally, you're asking her how has been everything that you've been doing today, right? And this noun is also interesting. Солнышко. Солнышко. It's also a neutral noun, singular, right? The ending O is singular, hard ending. Солнышко, дело, 
same ending. So, this O is unstressed, of course. That is why we pronounce it as Solnishka. And if you want to say um, my sunshine, or literally it means little sun. So, my sunshine. My Solnishka. Mayo Solnishka. You have seen already Maya Daragaya. Daragaya. Maya Daragaya. This affectionate word is feminine, so the possessive word will also take the feminine ending. Solnishka is neutral, so the possessive word will take the neutral ending. Mayo. And what if, for example, you want to call her my bunny, yeah, my little bunny? In Russian, it will be zaychik. Zaychik. And it ends in a consonant, so it's masculine. And the possessive word will take the form moi. So this is just a brief summary for you of how we change the possessive word according to the gender of the noun. You will see more information about it in another video. And now let's turn to the last example for neutral nouns. This is again a line from a very popular song, a Russian song, performed by a very extravagant singer. Uh, her name is Janna Aguzarova. And let's first read the line, then I'll explain what it means, and we will listen to this part of the song. Ah, slava mai всегда prasti. Naprasna себя ты сомнениями мучаешь, мучаешь. Ты, ты и только ты. Uh, nouns in plural. Here we have слова, words. Do you remember the singular form? The ending a, right? Дело, дело, дела. Слово, слово, слова. Short words they uh, change their emphasis. So what is this song about? This singer uh, tells us about her fiancé who is jealous. He's jealous that she's been spending too much time with her band, writing music, performing. So he thinks uh, she should pay more attention to him. She should be with him uh, more often. But she uh, she is very uh, laid back. She tries to calm him and says, Well, darling, don't worry. I love you. and uh, But I love music too. This is my life. But you are also very important to me. And uh, I'm always honest with you. That's why she says uh, my words are very uh, always simple or straightforward. I'm always straightforward with you. And you've been torturing yourself with doubt for nothing. So you don't need to do it because everything's fine. It's you, you and only you. Ты, ты и только ты. So if your girlfriend is jealous, you can sing this line to her and um, I'm sure she will, um, she will be happy. <laughs> okay, now let's listen to the song. Now a brief summary on regular endings and we'll move to irregular endings and exceptions. So, regular plural noun endings for all three genders are for masculine 
soft variant. The soft sign or Y go to E. Remember, дождь, дожди, rain, rains, музей, музеи, museum, museums. Hard variant for masculine nouns. You just attach U. For example, compliment, a compliment, комплименты, compliments. Feminine nouns, soft variant, soft sign or я change to E, so you replace them with E. For example, ночь, night, ночи, nights. История, история, истории, story, stories. And hard variant for feminine nouns, the A ending changes to U. Женщина, woman, женщины, women. Neutral nouns are different from masculine and feminine. In the soft variant, the ending е or ё changes to я. For example, желание, wish, желания, wishes. And hard neutral ending о changes to а. Remember, дела, дела, как дела, things to do. Great, I hope you got it. And now we are moving to irregular endings. When speaking about irregular endings, the first thing that is instantly mentioned is the seven-letter rule. So what are these endings? And how are they different from the regular endings? As you remember, the main rule says that the hard ending for masculine and feminine is U. So if you see a hard consonant or A at the end of the word, you must put U. However, not after these seven letters. Gutturals, K, G and H, and hushers, Z, Sh, Ch and Sh. These seven letters do not tolerate U, so they are never used with U. Always write E after them. Let's look at the examples on the whiteboard in our classroom. First, let's look at some nouns ending in gutturals. Gutturals are the sounds that you pronounce using your throat. So, K, G and H. The first example here is the word подарок. Подарок with two unstressed O's here and K at the end. So, uh, if you remember our regular rule, the noun that ends in a consonant, a masculine noun that ends in a consonant, should attach U. But we know now that with gutturals it doesn't work. So we attach E instead. So presents, gifts in Russian will be подарки. Подарки. Now you may wonder where did it go, right? Where did this O go? Uh, this is called a fleeing vowel and we will come back to this later in this video in the chapter of exceptions. Now let's look at another noun. Another masculine noun ending in G, G. Pirog, pirog. Here O is stressed. The plural form is Piragi, Piragi. So again, instead of adding U, we added E because G is never used with U. And the last example here is Успех. Успех. Again, a masculine noun ending in х. Успехи. Again, и e instead of у in the plural form. Now, if you look at the translation of this word, успех, success, успехи, plural, doesn't really make sense in English. So, you don't say successes normally. But in Russian, it means more like um, positive results. So something that you succeeded in. And later, when we 
uh, when we look at some phrases, I will show you where to use this form, успехи. Actually, it's quite common. It's a common word in Russian. And I'll show you when we get two phrases. And now let's look at some examples with the hushers. So the hushers are the sounds uh, that make a hushing sound, right? Z, sh, ch, and sh. Let's look at the example words with these sounds. So hushers. Mirage. Mirage. Z does not go with u. We write i. Malish. Malishi. I. One pronunciation nuance. We write E here and here, but these two consonants are always hard. They just were born hard and it's their nature. So we will still pronounce them hard as if you were saying Z with an U and Sh. So, miraji, mali shi. But we will not write u, we will write e. That's uh, how these letters are. Next, kluch, ch, kluch, kluchi, i. Ovash, ovashi. With these ones, they are intrinsically soft, so we will pronounce them as it's written, chi and shi. Only with these two we will pronounce hard, zhi and shi. Okay? So, uh, why are these seven letters different? That's a good question, and I will make a separate video on it. But for now, I want you to make peace with it and uh, just accept it. Just memorize three gutturals k, g, and h, and four hushers, z, sh, ch, and sh. Never ever write u after them, and only say u in z, z, and sh. Okay? Now let's look at some example phrases with these nouns. The first phrase here is a nice casual way to let her know you love her. You can also use it as an SMS or send it through your favorite messenger to her. So, let's read it. Дорогая, ты не видела ключи от моего сердца с тех пор, как мы познакомились. Я Не могу их найти. And here we have this word ключи, keys, and we have a harsher ch, so it takes the e ending in plural. What else do we have here? Uh, again, we have a preposition that takes the unstressed o at моего, at моего, so it attaches to the next word at моего in this word you may have noticed that g is pronounced as v this is uh, not very common so this is rare but there are some very common words that include this uh, way of pronunciation uh, we'll talk about them in our pronunciation video so at моего Сердца. Сердца. This letter is silent. So you will say сердца, not сердца. Okay, I hope uh, you will use this phrase and it will be helpful. The next one is a way to compliment on uh, your girlfriend's or your wife's cooking. So you want if you want to compliment on her cooking, uh, for example, well, this is about cabbage pies, but you can put here anything you want. Это лучшие пироги с 
капустой, что я ел. Ты все так вкусно готовишь. The noun in plural is пироги, pies. G is a guttural sound, so it takes the E ending. By the way, the adjective best, лучшие, actually also has a plural ending. Лучшие пироги. Uh, the adjectives in plural will be... Um, discussed in detail in a separate video. For now, just uh, memorize that adjectives also agree with nouns in uh, number and gender. And we are moving on to next phrase. If you want to ask your lady what to get her from your trip, you can use this phrase. For example, Я еду в командировку в Италию, поэтому принимаю заказы на подарки. Напиши, что тебе привезти. What do we have here in plural? Подарки, gifts. So, the letter К, подарок, Singular form is подарок. Since we have к at the end, we will use our seven-letter rule and attach e. Uh, what else do we have in plural here? Заказы. So this is regular case. So the singular form is заказ, order. It's masculine. It's not these seven letters, so we attach U for the hard ending. And the last example for the masculine nouns ending in these seven letters. Привет, родная. Как дела? Как успехи? Remember this word, успехи, successes or positive results. So, when do we say this phrase? Как успехи? This is actually very common. We say it when we know that the person has been doing something, has been up to something. For example, uh, she's been taking English lessons or she's been learning uh, how to grow plants. So, she's been doing some gardening. And you want to ask her uh, if she has been successful in it. So, this is the phrase to do it. Как успехи? Very common. So, now uh, we have looked at another two phrases with masculine nouns ending in uh, some of these seven letters. Oh, actually, uh, I want to draw your attention to this word here. Radnaya. It's an affectionate word for your girlfriend and literally it means um, like native. We use uh, the same word uh, in the phrase native language. Native language. Rad noi yazik. So, rad noi yazik. Yazik is masculine, so the adjective native will take the masculine ending, but when you address your girlfriend, of course, it will be feminine. Radnaya. So, see, um, here you kind of let her know that she's been uh, very dear to you. She's like um, the closest person to you. Radnaya. She's like already uh, a member of your family. Radnaya, radnoy, yazyk. Native language. Okay, now uh, you'll be delighted to know that the seven-letter rule works for feminine nouns too. Uh, so far we've been looking at masculine nouns, but it works for feminine nouns too. How does it work for them? Uh, you know that feminine nouns in their hard variant 
end in a, right? So, they end in a, and if they have one of these seven letters preceding the a ending, so in their stem, if there is one of these seven letters, we will not change the a ending to u, we will change it to e. Let's look at some examples. Feminine nouns have these seven letters in their stem. So it's not the last word, uh, it's not the last letter in the word, it's the second to last letter. So the ending will be a, but it's preceded by this uh, consonant k, g, and h. Now we are looking at the feminine nouns with the gutturals in their stems. So we change a to e. We don't change it to e as in our regular case, regular rule, but since we have k here, k cannot be followed by e, so we change it to e. And we have Kamandirovka, Kamandirovki, Padruga, Padrugi, G is followed by E, Pameha, Pamehi. The word Padruga is a peculiar word here because it can mean different things depending on who is saying it. So, for example, if a woman says uh, Maya Padruga or Mai Padrugi in plural, my female friend or my female friends. So, for a woman, it's just a female friend. But if a man says Maya Padruga, that means uh, my girlfriend, so my partner. So, please be aware of this difference. Now, let's look at the feminine nouns with the harshers in their stems. Распродажа, распродажи, каша, каши. So, again, here you see our harshers, ж and ш, and According to our rule, we do not change a to u as usual, but we change it to e. But still, we pronounce it as z and sh. Remember this pronunciation nuance about z and sh. Распродажи каши. Now, I know you uh, don't really use the word porridge in English. Uh, now, but in Russian, kasha is uh, any type of porridge. It can be oatmeal, it can be buckwheat, it can be um, anything else, any grain that you can cook as porridge. So, we also have the plural form of this word, which is like, uh, like types of porridge. Kashi. Next word, встреча. Встреча. Meeting, встречи. Again, ч, а goes to и, e, according to our seven-letter rule. Тёща, ш, тёщи. Again, и, e, not у. Mother-in-law. So this word, тёща, means mother-in-law, but uh, this is... Um, a mother-in-law for a man. So this is your wife's mother. Because in Russian we have different words for a wife's mother and a husband's mother. So your wife uh, will call your mother a different word. Свекровь. 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 This is mother-in-law for a woman, a husband's mother. Тёща is a wife's mother. Very good. Now we are turning to example phrases. While my twin Anastasia is cleaning the board there, 
I would like to remind you that lessons with a tutor will save you a lot of time learning because our tutors keep close watch on your mistakes and give you instant feedback. Besides, with a tutor you can practice speaking about the topics that interest you. You can learn a lot about the Russian culture and mentality. And all of this is of course much more enjoyable if you study with patient tutors that certainly work at aruspro.com. So, follow the link in the description below, book a trial lesson or even a block of 20 lessons straight away. Why a block of lessons? To save some money, of course. The first phrase is a cry from the depth of a heart very much in love. Как мне надоели эти командировки. Я хочу проводить больше времени с тобой. Как мне надоели эти командировки. Я хочу проводить больше времени с тобой. Everyone wants this, right? The second phrase is another cry. Твои подруги постоянно звонят в не подходящий момент. Your friends, meaning your female friends, are always calling at the wrong time. Твои подруги постоянно звонят в неподходящий момент. So I hope uh, you don't get to use these phrases, but if you do, here they are. And the last two examples for this rule are phrases that you can use in everyday life. This can be a potential dialogue between a Russian wife and her foreign husband. Дорогой, she asks him, Дорогой, ты ешь каши? Каши? He's surprised. Каши, it's plural. А их больше, чем одна? There are more than one. Я знаю только овсяную кашу. So that's what I told you about. In Russia, we love kashi. Yeah, we love um, oatmeal, buckwheat, all kinds of kashi. So we use this word in plural. And remember our seven-letter rule: we write e after sh. Okay. And next phrase you can use it uh, if you are talking with your girlfriend by Skype and you are having some problems, she's breaking down, something like this. So you can say, Дорогая, я плохо тебя слышу. Какие-то помехи. Подожди, сейчас перезвоню. And here we have the noun Помехи. Х. One of the gutturals. He instead of х. Seven letter rule. Congratulations! You are now almost masters of plurals. You know regular feminine and masculine endings. You know regular neutral endings. You know about seven Russian letters that do not tolerate u and only cooperate with e. You have also learned a bunch of phrases that will come in handy when talking to your loved one. And you can already go and use all of this right now, unless you are brave enough for a portion of exceptions. The true exceptions, as I like to call them. Are you ready? Let's nail them! First of all, I need to tell you about two separate root exceptions. That is the nouns that form their plurals using a different root. Человек, person, human, люди, people, ребенок, child, baby, and дети, children, 
babies. So as you can see, these nouns formed their plurals using a completely different root. So the fundamental part of the word changed. Not only the ending became plural, e. Now you already know that e is a plural ending. But the fundamental part, the root, has changed. So this is, uh, this is called a separate root formation, when a word changes to another form using a different root. Um, actually, these cases are quite rare in the language. Usually, the root stays the same and only the ending changes when uh, the word makes transition from its dictionary form to another form. So if you know the root, this fundamental part, yeah, uh, the, the part without the ending, if you know it, you can identify this word no matter what ending it puts on. But sometimes we uh, encounter such exceptions. And in English, actually, it's almost the same, right? Person, people, not persons. Child, children. So here you have a different ending. But still, these words are kind of irregular in English too. Um, by the way, the word baby, right? Baby, ребенок, in Russian is used only for a little child, a newborn. So please do not use the word ребенок as an affectionate word for your girlfriend. If you want to call her baby, don't call her ребенок. Uh, call her, there is a different word, you can call her малыш. Малыш. We have already seen this word before when we were speaking about the seven letter rule. So малыш, cute little child, cute little baby, can be used as an affectionate word for your girlfriend. Okay? Right. So now let's look at some examples with these nouns. The first phrase uh, will be useful for you if you are going to visit uh, your girlfriend uh, in Russia or in Ukraine or in some other country and you want to bring some presents for her children, if she has children. So let's see. А чем увлекаются? Here you pronounce it as са, just са, with a ц. Чем увлекаются твои дети? What are your children keen on? So the keen on part is this word. Увлекаются. Я просто думаю, какие подарки им привезти. So, дети твои. If you remember, the possessive pronoun also changes its ending to plural to agree with this noun. Anything else here in the plural form? Padarki, right? Presents, gifts. So if you are going to visit your girlfriend, you can use this phrase. Next phrase. Our next phrase is actually a line from a very popular Russian Soviet film. Uh, it's actually a New Year kind of a fairy, fairy tale film, and it's called uh, the Wizards, Charadei in Russian. And uh, this um, character, a man, gets lost in a huge building. So in Russian, um, in Russia, in the Soviet Union, we uh, have um, such buildings that are very, very tall with many floors, especially if it's a scientific institution of some sort. Uh, the building is very big and it's very easy to get lost there. So this man gets lost and um, he is looking for people, like anybody, who can help him get out of the building. Let's first read the phrase and then we will watch this excerpt uh, from the film. So he's shouting, Ludi! Ау! 
awu uh, is just an interjection, um, an exclamation, like hey people, yeah, somebody, hey, кто так строит, а? Huh? So he's um, he's very angry, like who builds like this? Who builds such buildings uh, that are so enormous and it, it's hard to get out of them? Кто так строит? Кто так строит? Then he finds footsteps. Следы. And it's plural. And it's a hard ending. След being the singular form. Footstep. След. Следы. Здесь прошли люди. People have passed here. Я их найду. I will find them. So now let's watch uh, this scene from the film. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt and now let's move to the next group of exceptions. This group of true exceptions are masculine nouns that for some reason become like neutral in the plural form and take the ending a or ya. Well, here we have uh, the examples of masculine nouns ending in a consonant. So they will attach the, the ending a, since this is the hard variant. So, город, города. And pay attention how the unstressed o shifts with the emphasis shift. Город, города. Лес, леса. Остров, острова. Паспорт, паспорта. And here we have just one S in Russian, not like in English. So, let's look at the example phrase. Милая, а где наши паспорта? Милая, а где наши паспорта? Они у меня в сумочке. So this is one of the situations when uh, she actually has something useful in her purse, right? Okay, let's look at four more examples of such nouns. Глаз, глаза, адрес, адреса. Pay attention again that we have one D and one S here, not like in English. Адрес, адреса. The emphasis shifts again. Учитель, учителя. So in this word we have the soft ending, so we'll put the soft variant Я. In these we have hard endings, so the ending А. And дом, дома. Uh, maybe you have seen this word in um, another context and with a different emphasis, like дома, дома. So this is a different word and it means at home. For example, я дома, I'm at home, я дома. But the plural form will be дома, emphasis on the ending, дома, which makes this о unstressed. Dama. And let's uh, now look at this phrase with the word dama. This is again a line from a movie, uh, which is a sequel of probably the most sensational Russian movie of the 1990s, Brat, which means brother. So in the sequel, in the second part, the main character Danila goes to America to help his friend's brother. But while he's in America, he meets a Russian woman 
and he thinks that she is in trouble, that she needs some help. So he goes to rescue her in this very bad neighborhood, very rough, unsafe place. Uh, he gets into a fight there and he gets arrested by the police. And here's how he explains to the police officers how he got there and uh, what he was doing there. So let's read the phrase first and then we will again watch the excerpt of the movie. So, я на метро ехал, увидел в окошко красивые дома. Вышел. So, this is our word. Дома, plural, houses. It agrees with the adjective красивые. We will get back uh, on adjectives in another video. And uh, what else do we have here? We have the word окошко. We have come across the word окно. So, I taught you that window in Russian is окно. But in this phrase it's окошко. Окошко, through the window. This is actually a diminutive form of the word окно. In Russian we uh, use the diminutive form very, very often. Uh, if, uh, as you progress in your language, you will notice, and the more you speak with natives, uh, you will notice how often we use these diminutive forms. So, окошко is a diminutive form of window, like a cute little <laughs> window, basically. So, now let's watch uh, this part of the movie and um, let's see what the police officer replies to this phrase. Remember, this is a very, very bad neighborhood. Let's watch. So? No. Я на метро ехал, увидел у окошка красивые дома, вышел. I saw these pretty houses through the window, so I got off. Are there any pretty houses over there? Там есть красивые дома? So, I really recommend you to watch this movie uh, because this is a movie that every Russian knows. Uh, again, it consists of two parts. So, one is actually is called Brat, brother, and uh, the second one is called Brat 2, so Brother 2. Uh, you can find it on YouTube, just type in Brat and you can watch it with English subtitles. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting film. Uh, it's filmed using uh, the modern Hollywood type of filming and it tells you it will tell you a lot about life in Russia uh, in the 1990s and about the Russian mentality. So if you watch this movie, uh, be sure you will have uh, a lot of topics to talk about with your Russian friends because as I said, Every Russian, or nearly every Russian, knows and loves this movie. And by the way, the word brat is an exception itself. And let's look uh, how it uh, forms the plural, the, uh, its plural. So how to say brothers in Russian. Let's see. So the word brat, brother, belongs to another subgroup of masculine exceptions. And uh, this group also behaves like neutral nouns in plural, but the ending is slightly different. So they add this ending, soft sign ya. So brat, bratia. And here, this, uh, this consonant, t, t, it's soft. Yeah? So it's not t, 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 it's t, t, t. Bratia. And here you uh, can hear this y sound, right? Bratia. Ya. Y. Bratia. Drug. Friend. Druzia. Druzia. Here we also have uh, some changes in the stem. So the stem of the word changes a little bit. And the ending is again soft sign. Ya. Druzia. Friends. 
муж, husband, мужья, мужья, husband. А uh, remember that this consonant ж does not become soft like ч. It it always stays ж hard, but still we have this sound between ж and я at the end. Мужья, жья. Okay, and now look uh, at um, the example phrase uh, that you can use uh, with your girlfriend. Um, this phrase, particularly asking her if she has watched the TV series Friends. And most likely she has, because uh, it was broadcasted in Russia and a lot of people watched it and they like it. They still watch it when they learn English. It's a good uh, it's a good TV series to learn English for Russians. So most likely she has watched it and um, you can start up a conversation based on this uh, TV series, on uh, the jokes in this TV series, right? So you can make some allusions to it and it will uh, get your conversation going. Uh, you can make your own jokes based on uh, this TV series. So, uh, let's read the phrase. А у вас в России I'm stressed. О, в России показывали сериал Друзья очень смешной. Мне очень нравился в свое время. So by asking, uh, have they broadcasted? Показывали? Uh, you let her know that you have watched it, because it's an American TV series. And uh, by the second sentence, you let her know you like it. And if she has watched it too and she likes it, she will reply uh, something like, um, да, я смотрела. Yes, I have watched it. And then you can um, get your conversation going. So, uh, let's look at more examples with this ending and one more phrase. Сын, сыновья. Again, the ending, soft sign я. Сыновья, unstressed о. Стул, стулья. Here the emphasis remained on у. Стул, стулья. Дерево, uh, one neutral noun in this group, I don't know why. Дерево, деревья. These are exceptions, right? So, uh, the example phrase, if uh, your fiancé has children, uh, particularly sons, uh, and you want to show her that you are interested in their lives, how they are doing, uh, you can uh, ask her this question, for example. А твои сыновья уже в каком классе? So basically, what grade are they in school? Uh, if it's just one son, of course, it will be сын. And the possessive pronoun your will be твой, since it will agree with the masculine noun. А твой сын? Уже в каком классе? Of course, if uh, her children still go to school, you can ask this question. Uh, what about uh, daughters? So, if she has daughters or one daughter. Actually, the word daughter is also an exception and we'll get to that uh, a bit later. And now, let me tell you about another group of masculine nouns that are also considered exceptions. These nouns referring to male persons such as man, uncle, grandfather, colleague, uh, they are quite interesting because they have feminine endings. Remember when we talked about plural of feminine nouns, we uh, looked at the endings and we have seen a and ya as feminine endings. But uh, strangely enough, uh, the most masculine words in the language, especially the word for man, uh, have fe uh, feminine endings, uh, such as life. <laughs> so, 
we need to accept it. So, uh, as you can um, guess, in the plural form, they will change their endings just like feminine nouns do. So, the ending a, ah, if it's a hard ending, a ah, will change to u. And let's read this word. This word is read mushina. Mushina. So, here you can see mushina. But uh, in our everyday uh, language, when we speak quickly, we don't say mushina. We say mushina. So, we use kind of uh, like sh, right? Sh, mushina. And mushini will be the plural form. Men. Dadia, uncle. Dadi. Here we have the ending ya, the soft ending, and it changes to e, uh, just uh, like we have seen in feminine nouns. So, dadia, uncle, daddy, uncles. Uh, an interesting uh, fact about this word. Uh, so, in Russia, little children who speak Russian, they call um, every mushchina dadia. So, they call men dadia. If you hear it from a Russian child, uh, it's not necessarily his uncle or her uncle. It can be just a man that he knows or she knows if this is a girl. Okay, next word. Dedushka. Dedushka. Grandfather or an elderly man. And the plural form will be dedushki. Why is that? Why is it not u? I hope you have the answer to that because of this letter. The letter k. As we know, according to our seven letter rule, k does not tolerate u. So it will always take e after that. Okay? Next word kalega. Kalega, I'm stressed. O and plural kalegi. Again, the letter g, as we know, according to the seven letter rule, does not take u, so we write e. Uh, by the way, this word kalega actually can be masculine or feminine depending on uh, the gender of the person you are talking about. Your colleague or your co worker can be a man or a woman. Right? So, you will use kalega for both. Right? So, these were separate words. Now, let's look at some phrase. Um, and this phrase, uh, I hope it will be useful for you because you can use it as a compliment to your fiancé or to your girlfriend. Let's read it first. Ты знаешь все Мужчины мне завидуют, потому что у меня есть ты. Uh, I think it's very nice, especially uh, when you make a pause here. So you say to her, ты знаешь, все мужчины мне завидуют. And you stop. And probably uh, she will ask, why? Why do all men envy you? So she will ask, почему? Почему? Why? Oops. Почему? Emphasis is here. And then you say this line. Потому что у меня есть ты. Because I'm with you. Uh, or literally, because you exist in my field, in my world. So, let's talk a little bit about this construction in Russian. Uh, so, we don't say, um, I have something, right? Literally, we say, something exists in my field. So, it's kind of like uh, every person has um, their own field, Right? Imagine that you are a, a little sun, right? 
um, that is beaming light uh, in all the directions. So you have this um, field of light around you. And in this field, uh, there are people, things, animals, right? Your dog or your cat uh, is near you, right? In your space, in your field. Uh, so they just exist near you. Literally, у меня. Near me, in this case. Near me. У меня. Near me exist you. So that is what we literally say. So if you say it like this, you make a pause after the first phrase and then you finish it with this punchline or I don't know uh, what you call it in uh, the comedy context, uh, but something like that, right? So if you say it like this, after she asks you, почему, I think it will be very nice. We are finished with masculine nouns, exceptions, masculine nouns that are exceptions um, from the rule, and we are moving to the next group of true exceptions uh, that do not obey uh, the regular rule. We are moving to feminine exceptions. Feminine nouns don't lag behind. They have their own group of exceptions, and as you can see, the plural forms look pretty regular. So they have U or E endings, but some changes happen in the stem of the word. So either the emphasis shifts or some syllables are added. So let's read these words. Сестра, сестры. And here we have the letter Yo. Сестры. So the emphasis shifts from the ending to the root of the word сестры. Жена, жены. Same principle, yo. By the way, the letter yo is always stressed. It is always accented in Russian. So whenever you see yo, you can be sure the emphasis falls on it. Next one. The word mat, mother, becomes matery. So here we have an additional syllable, matery. Uh, a few words about the word mat. Uh, actually, in our everyday speech, we don't use it very often because uh, it sounds kind of um, cold and, um, well, we don't call our mothers mat. We use the word mama. Usually, we refer to our mothers as mama. Where can we see this word, mat? Uh, for example, in literature. So, if the author describes uh, that um, the character and his life, right, and his mother was uh, a seamstress, for example, right? So, uh, the author will use the word mat because the author is kind of, um, well, he's not attached probably to uh, the character. So, he can um, allow himself to use this word. But I don't recommend you to use it uh, when you refer to, the, to your mother or to the mothers of your friends uh, or even um, not your friends, but your acquaintances. So you see, in everyday life, we don't really use it. But you might see it, uh, as I said, in literature or in some other contexts. For example, in Russia, we have um, an organization, Materi, Materi Rasi, Materi Rasi, literally Mothers of Russia. So this is um, kind of an organization that uh, defends the rights of mothers in Russia. I'm sure you have something like this in your country as well. Or another phrase. Mother's Day. So how do we say Mother's Day in Russia? By the way, Mother's Day in Russia is um, in November, usually. If I'm not mistaken, it's 
uh, the last Saturday of November, but I might be wrong here. I need to check. Uh, I know that in America, it's in May, the 14th of May or something like that. But in Russia, we also have Mother's Day. And uh, it's День Матери. День Матери. Here, in this phrase, Матери is actually not plural, but actually it's the genitive case. Oh, I think I just said too much about the genitive case and if you want to know what it is, I'm afraid you will have to order some lessons with our patient tutors at aruspro.com. Dodge, Dochiri. Daughter, daughters. Same principle as in mat, matiri. Now let's look at some examples. So if you have sisters and um, you uh, showed the picture of your fiance to them or um, they had, uh, they, they have just become acquainted with her, Later, you can say to your girlfriend, to your fiancé. Мои сестры сказали, что ты очень милая. My sister said that you are very nice or cute. This word has two meanings. Мои сестры, here's our exception, and it agrees with the possessive pronoun мои, plural, мои сестры сказали, что ты очень милая. And I promised you to come back to this example uh, if your fiancé has daughters. So now we know how to say daughters in Russian. Дочери. А твои дочери уже в каком Классе. So, what grade are your daughters? А твои дочери уже в каком классе? Again, дочери agrees with твои, the possessive pronoun. Some more examples of this group. Семья, семьи. Война, войны. Звезда, звезды. So again, a few feminine nouns where we can see the emphasis shift when they become plural. Uh, война, войны. Here you can notice that unstressed all becomes stressed. Звезда, звезды. We have already seen this letter in сестра, сестры. Жена, жены. Right? Sister, wife and star uh, do this. Let's look at the example phrase with this word, звезды. This phrase is a phrase from a poem, actually. It was written by Vladimir Mayakovsky, uh, a very uh, popular poet. In, um, he was very popular in... He was very famous, I'm sorry, he was very famous in the beginning of the 20th century and still his poetry um, is very loved by Russians. So this is from a poem that every Russian who finished high school knows. So let's read it and uh, talk a little bit about it. Ведь, если звезды зажигают Значит, это кому-нибудь нужно. So, this is about, um, this is a metaphor, right? Uh, звезды, as in any poem, here we uh, can see a metaphor. Звезды is a metaphor for human lives. And in the author's opinion, if they light up the stars, so if um, they light up human lives, uh, so if a child is born, a new star gets lit up, 
If a child is born, then somebody needs this. It's not... Um, it's for a reason, right? If a child is born, it's for a reason. So in the author's opinion, we are all here on purpose. Every human has some mission in life. And um, actually, I agree with Vladimir Mayakovsky. And what do you think? Write your thoughts in the comment section. And we are moving to neutral exceptions now. So what about neutral nouns? You're right, they also have their own group of exceptions. First of all, let's look at this word. Yablaka. Two unstressed O's. Yablaka. Apple. So, strangely enough, it doesn't change its ending to A, like all neutral nouns do with the hard ending, but it changes the ending to E. Yablaki. And again, we have the K consonant here. That's why it's not Yablak. So it's not U. It's E. Yablaki. The next two nouns, vremya and plemya, end in mya. So in Russian, we have a group of neutral nouns ending in mya, and they all uh, obey one rule. So their ending will change to this. Vremena, mena, vremena, plemena. And we are going to look at two more nouns like this, which uh, are in a very, very nice song that we are going to listen to in a moment. So, two more examples of the neutral nouns ending in мя, имя, and семя. So, имя becomes имена in plural, семя, семена, names and seeds. And now let's look at these two words used in a line from a very cool song. Uh, this song, uh, the genre of this song is rap slash rock, uh, which is a very cool mixture in my opinion. Personally, I like Russian rap, but only certain bands that write strong texts on some philosophical topics, not the kind of tracks about uh, cars, uh, money, chicks, well, you know what I'm talking about. But this song is very philosophical, very strong words, and it's performed by two bands, two, actually two of my favorite Russian rap bands, Grot and 25-17. So this is the name of the band, 2517. And the song is called Sonsu Navstrechu, Towards the Sun. So let's read the text first and then we will listen to, uh, to this line from the song. Nas haranili i zabit Хотели имена, но они не знали, что мы семена. Мама зима благословила нас. Мы прорастаем сквозь Asphalt. So, um, if you have read the translation, uh, again, these are all metaphors, but the, uh, the meaning is that we, uh, the characters of the song, they are very perseverant, so they don't um, succumb to any circumstances. They are willing to achieve what they want, so nothing can stop them. And even um, difficulties, like Mother Winter has blessed us, 
if you know what Russian winter is, uh, you can imagine that this is not <laughs> what you want to experience, right? This is very, very cold, very hard. But Mother Winter has blessed us. That means the difficulties are good, right? For them, it's a blessing to experience difficulties. And we are growing through the asphalt, right? No matter what difficulties they experience, they are still achieving what they want. Let's listen to it. So, why have I been speaking about Russian rap in this video? Because, actually, I have a student who became interested in learning Russian thanks to Russian rap. Uh, he said it was speaking to him through some spiritual level, because, uh, of course, he didn't understand a thing, but he still liked it. So, if you are interested in rap music, if you like it in general, probably this can be your motivation too. To learn the Russian language. So I recommend you to Google these bands first and listen to their songs. And now we are moving to the last group of true exceptions, the fleeing vowels. Stop, 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 wait a minute, move away the title, I forgot to say something. Sorry guys, I forgot to tell you that your girlfriend will probably not know this song uh, because normally Russian women don't listen to rap music. So this was only for you guys. Now we're certainly moving to fleeing vowels. There is quite a large group of masculine nouns that end in these two letters. O, K. So the OK nouns. What do they do in plural? What happens to them? They lose this O. So, Padarak, you already know this word. Padarak becomes padarki. This O is called uh, a fleeing vowel. Some people call it a fleeting vowel. So I'm not uh, quite sure what is correct, but I think a fleeing vowel is uh, more correct. So if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comment section. So padarak, padarki. Ботинок, ботинки, носок, носки, щенок, щенки, рынок, рынки, кроссовок, кроссовки. And you noticed we have quite a few unstressed O's in these words. Рынок. Krasovak. So I hope you remember about this rule. This is almost it, but I want you to listen to the last two phrases for today. Let's do it. This is a very important phrase to say to your fiancé. Котенок, я обещаю тебе, что не буду разбрасывать свои носки когда мы поженимся so here we have the plural form носки but this is not why this phrase is important it is important because here we have the word котенок kitten that you can use as an affectionate word for your girlfriend actually in russian we use uh, various baby animal names to call our loved ones. So, for example, котенок, тигренок, львенок, совенок. These four can be used for both men and women. However, we use тигренок and львенок more for men, because, you know, they are more tough, like, like tiger and lion but we still use them in their cute little diminutive form. So, little tiger, little lion, tigrionak, livionak. Katyonak is used more for women because, you know, cats are more 
uh, are cuter, more fluffy, and so on. So, котенок, again, uh, this is a diminutive baby name. Савенок can also be used for your girlfriend, especially when she likes to stay up at night um, and uh, later in the morning she cannot wake up. So she's like a little owl, night owl, савенок. These three, слоненок, поросенок and утенок, um, are not usually used for your girlfriend or boyfriend. Uh, they are used more with children, mainly because children like to watch cartoons, right? And the characters of the cartoons are often animals, like elephant, слоненок, piglet, поросенок, or duckling, утенок. But you can also use these words to uh, call your child or a child that you know who speaks Russian. For example, слоненок is used when the child tends to be very loud uh, in his or her movements and um, they tend to break things maybe when they move or they walk and make a lot of noise. So like a little elephant, слоненок. Um, поросенок is used for a child who tends to get their clothes uh, dirty while playing or eating. So they are like little piglet. Uh, it's not offensive for a child. You can call a child поросенок. You can also add маленький поросенок, little piglet. Well, утенок, um, it's uh, like an affectionate name for a child. It doesn't mean anything. You can call a child утенок and uh, that that is okay. I don't recommend you to use слоненок and поросенок for your girlfriend. Only if you have a very deep relationship, you are very close to each other and she understands you love her um, and when you call her поросенок you don't mean to offend her but uh, you still want to point out that she got something on her clothes, right? Uh, so be very careful with these words when talking to your girlfriend. Also, uh, you might have noticed that these words end in ok, just like we uh, seen before, right? Um, they are all masculine and they end in ok. However, baby animal names do not obey to the fleeing vowel rule. They have their own plural forms. You can see that kittens will be katyata, little tigers tigriata, livyata little lions, savyata little owls, slanyata parasyata, and utyata. So this is uh, another group of exceptions actually in Russian. Uh, it, this might be useful for you to know as well. So, uh, this is all about baby animal names and cute little nicknames. And now we are moving to the last example for today. And this is again a line from a song of the extravagant Soviet singer Janna Aguzarova, who you already heard today. And this song, well, don't try to find much sense in it. It's just about um, how wonderful it is to go for a walk with your loved one once in a while, right? It is, um, it is lovely, actually. So let's first read the line and then we will listen to it. Эти жёлтые ботинки. And ботинки is uh, the plural form, shoes. So, эти жёлтые ботинки шагают быстро по асфальту. As I said, don't try to find much sense in it. Just listen. So, 
if you want to listen to the whole song or um, some other songs that you heard today, I will leave the links below in the comment, in the description, sorry, in the description for this video. So this is almost all for today. I only want to say a few words before we part. So I'll see you in a few seconds. Well done, guys! And now I want you to take a pen and a notebook, rewind the video and make some notes. Please do it even if you think you understand all of it and you can remember all of it. Because when you write with your hand, your brain gets an opportunity to use an additional perception channel and it makes stronger synapses. So write down the rules together with the example words and phrases. Try to make your own phrases with the words you consider the most useful for yourself. You can post your examples in the comment section below and when I have a minute I will check and possibly correct them. As for the exceptions, you don't have to memorize all of them at once. For starters, just use one or two words. Choose one or two words. Use them in a sentence. Make sentences with them. Learn them for real. And say your sentences to your wife or girlfriend. I'm sure she will be more than happy to hear you speak Russian. I'm saying до свидания now to you. I'm sure you learned a lot today. You found this useful. And now you're a Russian pro.